Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Sean Mendez. So exciting. A new album potentially on the way, but today, Wonder Drops, an incredible record that deserves your ear. If you haven't listened yet, we're going to put a link in the description below. Please also leave your honest feedback of the song and of our conversation in the comments section below. If you like the video, hit like. If you don't, you, you can be honest, but I ask you, even if you hate us, please subscribe. Okay. I uh, think Sean Mendes is here. Let's do this. Yo. Good morning, sir. How are you, man? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Um, honestly, I, I... Nice to see your face. Yeah, thanks. Hi. <laughs> I, I'm I'm okay. I'm honestly music. I'm very happy that music is coming from you, mm. and obviously it has been in the last few weeks. Um, like, I, it's just been a bright spot in a really dark time. Yeah, and I can only assume that because everybody's going through this. For you to make the music that uh, the two records that I've heard, it must have been a bright spot for you too. The creation of it. What what was the timeline? How did it all work out? Man, you know, I think I went in to make the, the record, the album, and two weeks of writing and, and lockdown happened and quarantine happened. And I ended up flying to Miami to move in with Camila and her parents. And I was there kind of like with her and we were like learning how to cook and do laundry for the first time in our lives which it sounds really stupid but like you know if you've been touring since you were 15 years old it's something that you just never really got to do yeah it's and life. Like, it's like life life it's it was I we got to do life and it was really um it was amazing and and there was definitely some panic though. I was thinking there's no way I'm going to make this album in this type of situation just because everything was scary. And we were watching the, the, the number go up on, on the cases every day. And it was just like a really frightening time. And, you know, as time went on, stillness kind of started to set in and I started journaling and inside the journal, I started writing this, it was just reflecting on my entire life and reflecting on everything that was going on in the world at the time. And, and I wonder this and I wonder that and I wonder this and I wonder that. And I just was writing that amongst all the other ideas. But it, I must have been like writing in a journal and calling my friends and, and family and speaking with Camila every night, conceptualizing life, realizing, not even technically realizing that it was going to be my album and it was going to be these songs. I got to the studio and I, and I had it it was there. The fun part was next. It, like, it was just bang on some instruments and sing some melodies. And you have an album, not, not to, not to downplay all that stuff, but you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. At, at what point do you adapt a, a journal in your life? Because it, for when you're somebody like you, or uh, I mean, just busy people with a lot of life being thrown, it's important to be able to like document what you go through. Cause then you can at least remember instead of just going from, a to B so quickly. So when did you pick that up? Actually, I think it, it, it's like, it just was something that I, I had to start doing because there was so much angst and, and thoughts happening inside of me. It didn't really have anywhere to go. And uh, I just had to start reflecting every day. And it's funny, man, because it, it, I've now become really obsessed with it. And I, I like, I never learned how to like properly write handwriting as a kid. So I taught myself how to write in handwriting and that, and it's like become this really kind of meditative process. And it's crazy important to have this little book to vent inside of. And at the same time to have this little book to write down what you're grateful for and to have this little book to just like get it out, you know, and, and that fuels the music you make. And it, and it fuels the mu music is a representation of what's going on internally. And if you can write it down like that, you, you're, you're, you're getting way ahead of the game. And at the same time, you're, you're honestly making yourself feel better as you do it. You know, it's, I, I guess like, you know, I, I get, where are you right now, by the way? Uh, I'm in uh, Westwood, Los Angeles, right by UCLA. Cool. Are you like in, are you working from home or I guess a studio? Sadly. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? How, how, East Coast, West I'm, Coast? I'm in, uh, 
I'm in uh, Camila's house actually in in LA too. Oh, beautiful. Oh my God. So yeah. you chose to do it this early. Are you a morning person? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been talking, to, I've been up since like six this morning. So I usually get up pretty early, honestly, but I go to bed pretty early some nights. So I'm all right. <laughs> how, are, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've, I've lost all perception of time, to be honest with you. And I, Same. I, I, every day feels like one. I sleep when I guess my, my eyes tell me to sleep. And yeah. I'm, I, I'm active when my brain tells me to be active, which is a, a healthy chunk of the day. But by the way, this, just from the two songs I've heard, so honest. And, and I, how often throughout this entire journey have you had to decide between being honest and having to filter your feelings? I mean, you, you make reference to it in wonder, but that had to have been a real thought process. I mean, how often do we decide to do that? literally every single day and every conversation we have you know it's it's really hard and I think that it's hard to know the right thing to say and the right thing to write about but like the hardest thing is is to be it's it's really hard to be human and and like the, the thing that I feel like I learned on this process is like you do not have to be an expert in in the matters of the heart to write about it and to speak about it. It's, you just have to morally know what's right and what's wrong and stand behind that and kind of just m- and move forward. Because I think like if everybody is waiting until they're a studied, you know, knowledgeable person in every single subject before they say how they feel about things, then no, then we have 10 people who are talking about things. You know what I mean? And I think I'd, it's not to say like just speak randomly, but I think that when it comes to what makes the heart hurt and makes the heart feel love. We all know we're all human. We, we, we know what that feels like and be confident and be strong in that. And I guess that's, that's what I was trying to go with. I was just trying to go with that process the whole time, you know, and even now, like just being on a a call with you, like this is my first time doing interviews in a cup in like a year. And it's like, I really feel like after all the time off, I just want to be super human with you. And, and that's it, you know? And by the way, like, that's what I took away from the song after my first listen. Like, you were wondering about everything you don't have, essentially. But there was one point in your existence where you were probably wondering about what, you, what, what you've accomplished. Do you get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm, How, mm-hmm. And, and I have those moments, too, in my life where I'm like, holy, one, is this real? But then, two, I wonder what it would be like if it was just... It's not the gone. Op- the op- yeah, gone. What it would be like mm. the opposite, you know? Um, well, you'd be fine. Yeah, thank you. Thank. I think. I think you'd. Uh, I, 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 thank you. And I think you'd probably do. You definitely do just well. I think. Yourself. I think, and that is really Im- an important thing is like for people and and everyone to kind of remember like the basics of of what it of what it is to be happy and and to be loved and to love people and to have people who support you and to have you know a roof over your head and like i know it sounds like super woo woo to talk about all that stuff but it is it is definitely what you you i think a lot of people went down the path of thinking about during this time off and it it makes it makes two things happen it makes you realize okay damn what i do is really special i don't want to just let every day pass without this being very honest and sincere and also there's this whole other side of life that is insanely special like learning how to do laundry (laughs) (laughs) well because it it grounds you but also like reminds you what's genuinely important which is being around the people you love um also, the mundane and the boring with those you genuinely care about is not so mundane and boring. Exactly. Yeah. It's the best stuff. It, it's, it's the, the best, best stuff. stuff. It's the best stuff. And it's so nice. It's so nice to hear you talk like that because it, I think that, like, it, to be always hanging on the edge of a cliff of like, what happens to me if I go away means that we've now associated ourselves with what we do. Yeah. And the, the, the free, you can, you really can give yourself a lot of freedom and it's really, really hard. And I'm not coming from a place of like knowing everything. Or any, this is something I'm majorly working on and struggle with every day. You free yourself by 
being cool with yourself and loving yourself and being like, this is, this is it. This is me. Like I, when I close my eyes, even if I'm sleeping in a bed with somebody at night, it's just going to be me inside that head. It's just going to be me inside this body. And it's like, I gotta be there for myself. I have to have my own back. I have to love me. And if you can kind of get that down pat and you can remind yourself, whether it's from journaling or it's just a practice you do every day, then you can start to really enjoy life. And I think a little bit more free of a way. And you know, I, I don't know. I, I, that's something I think that I've been thinking about. It sounds like you've been thinking about, and I, I'm sure others have been too, you know. Hey, beautiful human, I got to hit pause real quick to tell you about my deodorant. I don't want to brag about my deodorant, but it's really great. It's made better. It blocks odor better. It, it, it smells better. It's native. I'm obsessed. That's why I'm telling you about it. And here's the deal. Growing up, I could never find the right deodorant. I used to sweat profusely. And nothing blocked it. Nothing made it smell right. And then Native just plopped into my life and everything changed seriously. It's vegan. It's never tested on animals. And it's just made right. It's made with things you understand. Tapioca starch, shea butter, coconut oil. You know these things. Plus the scents. Oh, they're delicious. Yeah, I'm describing the smell of a deodorant. These smells are delicious. My favorite is lavender and rose. Uh Citrus and herbal misk, very good. Big fan also of coconut and vanilla. They have a bunch of scents. Plus, they rotate seasonally, so there's definitely going to be a scent for you. I'm telling you, try it out if you're in the market for deodorant. It's proper, I promise. I, I would never put something that wasn't proper in your zone. Uh, nativedeo.com slash Zach if you want to try it out. Plus, there are 14,000 five-star reviews, so people try it. And also, there's a 30-day risk-free situation here so you can buy native try it out if you don't like it send it back you get your money back it's that freaking easy so nativedo.com slash zach or just use my promo code zach okay i'm gonna shut up now back to sean i'm gonna ask a, a personal question but you, you make you, again like i really think this is one of the most personal records that you've put out there am, am i wrong in saying that or no it's it's absolutely one of the most personal records that i put out there and always always am I trying to be as real and as honest as possible and always always am I falling short because of the the, the fear of what people are going to think about it and this is a process like I think as an artist and just the person is like if you can understand that not everyone's going to love it and it's going to resonate with some people and it's really going to change some people's lives and some people are going to be like that's pretty meh but you really love it and it changes your life then that's real freedom and that's real happiness, I think. And, you know, it's just a process. And, and I feel like with this song, Wonder, I hope that people can feel that sense of, I've let go a little bit. I let the reins go a little bit, even in the type of the, the way that the, it sonically sounds by the end, it kind of just sounds like a tornado and a storm are happening at the same time. And it's like, it, it's kind of what's been going on inside, you know? But it's this anthemic breakdown and almost like an unveiling, like a letting loose. It's awesome. It's pretty unruly, yeah. Do you cry often? Oh yeah, man. Don't don't even play a sappy rom com in front of me because that'll get me. Do you cry while creating this album? Um, I guess. To, I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess when you're making an album, of one, one of the biggest things that's happening is you're just constantly reflecting on your life and trying to find the 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 you're touching the nerves that are are painful, you know. And sometimes you're touching the mate, the beautiful ones. But yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say it's the album that makes me cry. I'd say that it's just like a, a natural reflex to how insanely difficult and confusing and complex life is that makes me cry. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much there to cry over that, like, yeah, I, I get it. That takes up a lot of the cry time. Um, it takes up a lot of the cry time. Really, you, you talk about the Sonics kind of connecting to your existence, like the breakdown of it, the, like, the, the live instruments. That is such an important part of what you do or what you're about to do. Is Is that a fair statement? Because... Live instruments are something that are, they're like, with, with respect to a lot of musicians, they're kind of forgotten about and it breaks my heart. Hugely. And I think that I went back and saw my sister after tour and she is like 17 and cool and has a, a really cool music taste now. And she knows like so much stuff. And I, and I was in the car and 
with her and I was like, what are you listening to? And she put on the Beach Boys and Frankie Valley. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> she put on Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. And I was not only surprised that she was listening to that firstly, but then secondly, I was like, holy shit, this needs to happen again. Yeah. This feeling yeah. is amazing. And a lot of the times throughout the album, I think you're going to feel that essence of what I got inspired by. I can't take my eyes off of you. And yeah, I mean, there's a ton of brass on this album. I love the brass. I mean, I had the, the sickest musicians I've ever worked with in my life. Kid uh, Harpoon and Nate Mercer and Scott Harris. Like, the amount of instruments being played on this album and how it actually sounded, even like if I objectively listen back to Wonder, not as a song that I've made, I'm like, damn, I think this sounds so good. And I don't mean that in a cocky way. I mean that in like, I, I really love this as a person. This is my taste. And I think this sounds so cool. And I think it sounds so amazing and beautiful. And I've, I've always felt that about my music, but especially this time around, it surprised me. I was lucky to work with some like pretty badass musician angels, you know? So yeah, man, I'm, the live I'm, stuff is important. I'm interested in the process, right? Like, and I know we do got to wrap it up, but like, do you you take your journal it starts there and do you take it to the writers that you've been working with for years do you go to new people do you craft them into records yourself and then you know try to arrange them how does it begin you know the journal it, there's no there's no rule you know and i really learned that this time around because before i would have to basically be in the room with a scott who i write a yeah. lot with and be like what are we writing about and then i realized all it takes is one word to inspire an entire idea. And sometimes you have zero ideas and you just start playing instruments. Um, this time around, a lot of the ideas started on my own in my condo or uh, at Camila's house. And it was just like me on the piano by myself and me messing around. It was really me having time to, to think and reflect. And all it takes is like one little chord progression or one lyric or one little melody to inspire a group of amazing writers and musicians and they really took everything that I, I came in with little these little notepads of, of ideas and they took it and, and helped me create this entire world so I'm, I'm really proud of this one man I really I feel this one is 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 on another level because it personally makes me feel like another level and and that's kind of the only thing I have to base it off of it, 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 that's what I'm walking away with right now is this, yeah. this, this freeing, this accepting of who you are and this willingness to share it. And you don't care about public judgment because through maturity and throughout this journey, you've understood that like, dude, music is art and it's going to be, it's going to sit differently with everybody. But at the end of the day, these are your records first. This is your story. And you're going to tell the story that is true to you and not one that you think people want to hear. And if that's any sort of, am I, is my takeaway correct? Your takeaway is so correct. It's not even funny. And I, I really think that, you know, that is how the greatest art is made is, is just coming at it from a very honest place and being like, I think this is really beautiful. And, you know, I, can I tell you a little story that I, I heard about that kind of changed my, my life with this album process? Please. So there's this author, her name's Elizabeth Gilbert, and she wrote Eat, Pray, Love and amongst a lot of amazing other books. But she has these, this incredible TED talk about your creative genius. And I, I do not uh, quote me on this because I, I'm probably saying it all wrong but basically she talks about how in ancient roman times or ancient greek times they if there was a painter and the painter was like painting great um art and they would go and bring it and show the public the public would say oh he has a genius or she has a genius living in the walls and it would basically mean that if you were to fail, you can't take all the, the blame because there was a genius doing it. And if you were to succeed, you can't take all the, the fame and glory because you had a genius living in your walls. And she talks about how step one and the only step is just showing up with like an open mind. And if it doesn't come, you know, your genius wasn't in the walls that day. And I just, it freed me up so much. She talks about how there was a poet and the poet would go for walks and hear poems coming like a roaring thunder, like a, the genius was coming and she'd race back to her house. And one time she got back to her house and 
she was just a touch too late and she caught the poem by its tail and she wrote the entire poem on her pad from bottom to top. And it was like this really amazing way of looking at creativity, which is like, show up, be open, and hope to God that there's a creative genius living in your walls. Because if not, then you might not make anything today. But but with that comes an acceptance of not making anything today, right? And like not being genius on that day. Exactly. And once you can do that, like you you relieve pressure from yourself. And I mean, everything becomes a little bit lighter. And who knows what can enter. Totally, totally, man. Hey, I really appreciate this conversation very, very Me much. Me too, man. man. I, I miss you, and I, I hope you're feeling good out there. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm as good as I can be during these times, but your music yep. has been a really bright light, and I thank you for it, and I'm sending love to you and to Camila. I'm sending tons of everybody. love out to you, man, and everybody listening, too. I think that – I think it's funny. Like, I never do these interviews, and I, and it's always, like, me talking to you, and then I realize there's, like, thousands of people who listen to this sometimes <laughs> millions and that and we never are just like hey what's up everyone who's listening thanks so much for listening and, and i hope you guys are feeling okay and i'm sending tons of love to you and it's just important to do that now i think and by the way they feel a part of these conversations and our conversations throughout the years have really been like a a bedrock and a, a, a really cool moment i think in uh the, the way fans perceive your art and, and even totally now, agree. the more honest and uh, I really, I, this album excites me and maybe possibly we can uh, dissect it a little bit together. I'd one love day. that, man. That'd be really great. I uh, appreciate you very much, man. Thank you Thanks, so Zach. much for your energy. Uh, have Always, a great day. You too. See ya. Love. Bye. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, subscribe, and uh, notifications, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.